The following program contains language, images, and or subject matter that may be objectionable to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Direct from Albany, New York, it's time for The New Media Zone! With your host... This week's new film and DVD releases. And the chance to win free movie tickets with the poster pair game. And now your hosts, Ed and Dave. Hello and welcome to the new media zone and dave here ed and dave are with you oh we're going back to one of our favorites tonight are we we like when we go back in time and tonight it's a good year dave where are we going at we're going to 1974 oh that's a good one uh early on in the 70s we got not a lot of disco time yet but nope. we have a lot of soul stuff Ooh. and some rock music we got good movies uh, good TV shows. The Rural Purge has come through, so oh. we're getting some of the more sophisticated type of comedy shows and shows. A lot of fun in 74. So much fun that we better get started Ooh. right now because i got a lot of other Ooh. things to uh, look at here. A lot of here. things to add to it? A lot of things to add to it. What are we starting with? Movies? Yes. 1974, the top 10 movies. The top 10. I'm going to start with number 10. That's a good place to start. Thank you, Ed. Number 10. Murder on the Orient Express. Huh. Oh, we were just talking about that on another show. That because was a that's, DVD release. Right, a new Blu-ray release. First time on Blu-ray. I never saw that, so I'd like to see that. I don't know who was in it. Uh, a lot of uh, actors. Well, I want to say Peter Ustinoff was maybe the Hercule Poirot. <laughs> what a lot of a actors. lot of actors. There's a lot of biggies. Uh, Tony Perkins, I believe. Martin Balsam. Oh, okay. A lot of these great old character actors. All right. Number nine: The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams. Oh, that was Haggerty. That was Haggerty. It was so popular they turned it into a TV show. That's right. So it's one of those Sun Classic. Uh, things that usually had chariots of the gods and all these odd movies. When I think of Sun Classic, I think of chips. Sun chips. Oh. Those good garden salsa chips. Very delicious. Number eight, The Longest Yard. Burt Reynolds? Yeah. Um, 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 Ted Cassidy. Yes. Was it Ted Cassidy or Richard no, Keel? I think it was Richard Keel. Huh. I think it was Richard Keel where he clotheslines the guy. Right, and he and broke he... his nose. No, he didn't. <laughs> he put there's another word he yeah. used in there. Right. Number seven. Ooh, ooh, a disaster film. Airport, 1975. Mm. From 1974. Even though it was 74, they gave I... it a little more life. By um, D. Martin, I think. I don't. I, I think he was in the original. Oh, the original one was 1970. Right. This was Charlton Heston, wasn't it? Yes. And, um... Helen Reddy. And, um... Joe Petrino, who was in all of them. Joe Petrino. <laughs> oh, right? What's his name? <laughs> Joe Petroni. I can't, I can't think of his name now, either. But I, got, I can picture him in my head. Oh, my God. It's not That's Lauren Green. No. <laughs> George, George Kennedy. George Kennedy, yes. <laughs> he was in all of them, even the Concord Airport uh, 79. And Karen Black. Karen Black was in, I think, um, ooh, uh, The Exorcist. Uh, I think she was in it. Linda? Linda Blair. I think she was having the transplant, right? Uh, which one was uh, Sonny Bono in? I think the first one, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't remember. All right, number six. Special the... Airport show we'll be doing. So oh, we can we'll do that. All the uh, character yeah. actors. And we can do an offshoot with Airplane. Right. Uh, the number six film of 1974, The Godfather Part Two. Oh, that's a big one. What number was that? Two. Part um, two. Well, what number on the list? Six. Seems like that should be higher. Well, I didn't make the list. 
<laughs> right. I mean, you got a problem with the list. You got a problem with yourself. <laughs> That's a big film. Won the best picture of the year, I think. But here it's number what? <laughs> number six. <laughs> number six. Um, you want to go back and edit your? Uh, no, that's the way. I don't they think are. anyone anyone out there is fact checking you right now. No, I'm just surprised as I. I well, know. when you put it together, then it's not surprising. I you. barely pay attention when I put it together. I'm just copying and pasting. It's not. I save that for the show for oh. my reaction. And okay. there's the reaction. There it is. It should be higher. Okay. Number five, the trial of Billy Jack. Uh, this was like three hours, I think. This was like, what, what was this, the second, third one of Billy Jack? The third one. Okay. was The Born Losers was the first one the character was in. And this was very long, but it did well, but not with critics. And there was one, Billy Jack Goes to Washington, that was never released. Ooh. Is this Laughlin? Mm-hmm. Tom Laughlin. Tom Laughlin. Number four. Earthquake. In oh. Sense Around. Did you see it in Sense Around? I did. Yes, that was fun at the it was, time. It was. Um, that was uh, Charlton Heston and, and <laughs> a lot of people. Victoria Principal. A lot of, a lot of actors. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria Principal right, and the t-shirt. Yep. And of course... Marjo Gartner. Joe uh, Petroni. No, he wasn't in that one. He was. He was in it. <laughs> yes. Um... Yes, we remember uh, the cameo appearance by Walter Matthau, yep, yep. which I borrowed from his yes. acting for that local film I was in, yep. where he was uh, when she takes the T-shirt out, so he's at the bar going, mm. <laughs> <laughs> licking his lips yep. at the T-shirt, the Miles T-shirt, which was Richard Roundtree. Yep. It was Miles that was on the T-shirt. Oh, good movie. Oh, great. yes. Number three. Ugh. Young Frankenstein. Oh, oh no! Just, not, just not. I, I didn't like it. I'm surprised. I couldn't get through it. I made you watch that. I said you've never seen it. You have to watch it. And you, you didn't appreciate the look and the throwback to no. the '30s movies. And then the uh, there's humor of different types. Some work, some doesn't. But it's well, most didn't. Had <laughs> to be one of the best comedies of all time. You didn't... No, it's not. Huh. <laughs> the only thing that I even laughed at <laughs> was when uh, Peter Boyle sang "Putting on the Ritz." Right. That was the, just the way he did that. Was the only thing that was humorous. Mm -hmm. um, and Gene Wilder had a fight so, to get that scene in there. Did he? Yes. He wanted. He wanted that scene. I think he wrote the script, right? right. Yeah. Mel Brooks said, "Well, if you're fighting for it, I'm going to put the scene in." One of the best scenes in the movie. And the only one you enjoy. Right. And uh, what's his name? Who's the Igor? Uh, Marty Feldman. Yeah, he was, he's, he was good. I saw, he had a, a TV show, variety show, years ago. Marty I Feldman's saw, Machine or something? I don't remember, but I thought that was funny. I used mm -hmm. to watch that. Didn't last long, but I thought that was funny. The number two, number two film from 1974, Blazing Saddles. Okay. Can't make that movie today. No, no, you can barely show it, but TCM still shows it. Oh, that uh, that is a good one. I did like that one. Mm-hmm. And the number one film, God knows why, The Towering Inferno. Oh. Which with earthquake, what did they call them? Shake, Shake and bake. Shake and bake. The I'm... disaster, Irwin Allen disaster film. Did you go out and see Towering Inferno? I did not. That was with Steve McQueen, I believe. Yeah, two two hours and forty five minutes, and the uh, pickings were so slim. I remember was we he saw... in it? <laughs> no, he no. wasn't in it. Okay, but uh, we saw that, and then a couple weeks later, there was nothing out playing. I think during the Christmas break, and we saw it again. Two, oh. two hours and uh, forty five minutes. Wow, I never watched it. I never, never saw watched that. it. Earthquake, I, I I watched, and quite frankly. At the end of Earthquake, that bad ending. No. What with the uh, with, with spoiler when the wife goes in the water? Yeah, and then and Charles Hessen's <laughs> having the affair with the young girl yeah. versus the old wife, mm -hmm. and she knows he's having the affair, mm -hmm. and then she gets swept away. I think it's like sewer or something. Right, the water, the climbing out yeah. of the sewers. And then he looks up at her, and she's <laughs> like, "Come to me." And he looks down. He looks up. And then he goes down and is also swept away. Now, let her go. <laughs> go for the young girl. 
The girl didn't step on her hands, did she? Did she have anything to do I with it? I think so. I think as they were either climbing up or something. She did that, something, yeah, didn't yeah, she? And she lost her grip on the... Yeah. But I didn't like that ending. Hmm. You know. From those cold, dead hands. <laughs> All right, that's movies, Ed. Move oh. on. What are you doing? What are you doing? You got I've something got to add? some other movies. I'll sit back and enjoy. The Satanic Rites of Dracula. Cool. I don't know that. Which was the last Hammer Dracula film. Who was Dracula? Christopher Lee. He was in that one? Okay. Yes. Okay. There was a, it was okay, and the, but there was a lot of nudity in there. Oh, there was? Yes. Oh, i got to watch that. Zardoz. That was uh, a future film with Sean Connery in like a diaper. A future is <laughs> a diaper. <laughs> i got to put a picture of that in there. You don't remember that? No. Okay. The Golden Voyage of Sinbad. Ooh, I did. I, that's a good one. Uh, who? That wasn't. Was that Patrick Wayne? No, that was the Eye of the Tiger. Okay. This I think was it, John Philip Law. Yes. Was it John Philip Law? Okay. Yeah, and I think uh, the one that's in the Hammer films, the Carolyn Monroe, was okay. in there. Captain Chrono's Vampire Hunter. I've heard of it. I never saw this. Which was a Hammer film that I only saw recently when it was put out on uh, Blu-ray. And it's pretty good. And The Longest Yard. We mentioned uh, that. Doug McClure. What? No. Oh, um, no. That's a different movie. The Long... I'm thinking of a different one. Well, this was in the top ten. I don't right. know why... Why'd you I, put it on there? I don't know started. how that got in my list. Um... There's another film with Doug McClure, Long something. That's what I was thinking of. Oh. I apologize. Death Wish. Oh, Paul Kersey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was his real wife in that at the time? I think was that, so. Was she the one in it? Yeah, he put her in a lot of films. The Mad Adventures of Rabbi Jacob. Do you remember this? No. <laughs> Believe it or not, I saw this in the theater oh, for no. some reason. I think because it looked kind of like slapstick, like a Pink Panther movie. Uh huh. But also, they were giving away free gum <laughs> to everybody that attended the performance because there was a scene where they fell in a vat of gum. Okay. It was in French. I think it was dubbed. I don't think it was subtitles. I don't know, but I did see it. Um, because of, I don't know if it was because of the free gum or because it looked like the Pink Panther. I'm not sure why. I'm, I'm going to go back to what I was saying. I think... You're going to look up the Doug McClure. Yeah, I think it's The Longest Mile. Okay. But I'm going to look it up. C continue. I've heard of that, but... Um, Big Bad Mama. Oh, uh, Angie Dickinson? Yeah, which was uh, Roger Corman. And I think... I want to say William Shatner and his bear behind. Oh, this. Well, and, uh, I want to see that. I'll see and, Angie Dickinson. Yeah, she was also nude, but we had to see his behind also. Well, do a trade-off. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. Of course, a classic. Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, which was a, the last uh, Hammer Frankenstein movie. I think it was rated R. I remember seeing this in the paper. It was at a drive-in. I said, geez, I don't think we can see that. It's rated R. R and has mm -hmm. hell in the title. That's very naughty. <laughs> the Land That Time Forgot. Oh, uh, Doug McClure. Which stars uh, who you're looking up. Yeah. I remember it, it was cheesy dinosaurs. Yeah, it it was, was men in suits, but it was kind of fun cause, as a kid because it was uh, dinosaurs. We didn't care if they were men in suits. <laughs> what? Okay, I remember there was another dinosaur movie. Not, I don't know what year it was. But the Last Dinosaur. It had Richard Boone in it. Right. Which was awful. Right. It's Alive. Oh, that's a baby thing. Mm-hmm. And this was a re-release. It came out earlier, which is why some of the girls look like they have 60s outfits on. Mm -hmm. But they re-released it here, and it did very well. And I saw it in the theater. I remember it had a very creepy uh, commercial. There's nothing wrong with the Davis. Or what the hell was <laughs> this? The Davises have had a baby, but they're not sending out any announcements. Most new parents are a little scared when they have a baby. The Davises are terrified. You see, there's only one thing wrong with the Davis baby. It's alive. It's alive. Don't see it alone. Please. Rated PG. Something wrong with the Davis baby. It's alive. 
And then they showed the bassinet with the arm coming out. It was very creepy late at night. It was the, I just already forgot, longest hundred miles of uh -huh. the movie. But it was from 1967, so uh, I was wrong. Uh, what did that have to do with? I don't know. Running or a war movie? I don't know. I didn't read it. Okay. The Lords of Flatbush. Oh, that was the Henry Winkler, Sylvester Stallone, someone yep, else. Yeah, 50s movie. Yep. And The Man with the Golden Gun, which was December 20th. And very odd, it didn't make the top 10 lists in 74 or 75. It was one of the least uh, money-making James Bond films. But uh, enjoyable with tattoo in it. Okay. Uh, songs? Songs. Oh, we got a lot of good old songs. songs. Some of I've never heard of. Like this one from Mac Davis, number 10. One hell of a woman. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I should have looked that one up. I don't remember that one. I don't know this one. I've never heard of it. Number 9 from Elton John. B -b -b Benny and the Jets. <laughs> um, number 8. Ray Stevens. The streak. <laughs> oh, oh they call in the street. <laughs> look at that, look at that. I remember that we had great fun with that. I don't know if it was sixth grade or seventh grade. That's where we were here. Mm -hmm. But uh, we enjoyed that because of uh, the big streaking, uh, what was that, theme or yep. fad yep. that was going on at the time. And uh, now it's called sexual harassment. <laughs> right. If you were running down the street, it would be sexual harassment now. Now, I don't know where that, I do remember in seventh grade, the, the can, Candy Rosanna was talking about how her and her friends were streaking on the weekend. And it was very titillating for my young seventh grade to think about that while I was sitting in homeroom. I think she is in the picture you put on Facebook with them protesting about smoking cigarettes. She is, yes, okay. she's in there. But uh, that was later on. In seventh grade, I was going, that's tricky. <laughs> oh my God. A little kid trying to contain himself while picturing uh, Candy's streaking nude out, oh. out there. Oh. Which I don't think she did. She <laughs> yes. Just he, a talker. You think she was just a talker? I think she was out there streaking. Yeah, I think she was doing some other things. <laughs> but uh, and, uh, and again with the streak, I remember I told the story with my uh, serious radio. I was so bored at work, it had a 45 minute rewind feature. I sat there and listened to the streak for 45 minutes. It kept me very entertained at work for 45 minutes. Alright. <laughs> okay. Number 7. TSOP by MFSB. What the hell is that? The, the Sound, Sound of, of Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Never heard by of Mother, Father, Sister, Brother. <laughs> it's an instrumental. <laughs> For a minute, I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> when you said the mother part. Mm, mother. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you'll know it if you heard it. Right. Instrumental. Uh, number six, the Locomotion, the Grand Funk Railroad versions. Yeah. Who did the first one? Little Eva? I think so. Then there was another one later on in the 80s. Uh, Kylie Minogue, I think, oh, did one. She? Okay. Yeah. Uh, number five, from the Jackson Five, Dancing Machine. I can't remember dancing the, around the house to those two songs when they were on the radio. Really? For some for a reason, yeah. Okay, I was... <laughs> what were you doing? I was listening to Alice Cooper. Oh, you were? You were dancing around and dancing? No, I was not music. dancing around to, to this music. I was listening to 18 and School's Out and Billion Dollar Babies and Raped and Freezing and I Love the Dead. All right, number four. Come and Get Your Love Oh, by Redbone. Yeah, I like that one. I liked it at the time, and then they came back in Guardians of the Galaxy during the opening credits. Oh, okay. And that, you remember what was unique about Redbone? No. It was a nat all Native American band. Oh. Hey! hey, hey. <laughs> and there was kind of... I didn't know if all this time till I was watching uh, what the original name of that was, was Hail. I thought they were going, hey, they were going, hail. Okay. And uh, sad to say that the original Native American who sang that song passed away 10 years ago. Oh. It's always sad when our friends <laughs> pass away. He didn't get to see the reemergence of that song in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And he's all the poorer for it. <laughs> Number three, love theme. 
from Love, Love Unlimited Orchestra. Love, do I know this Love's theme? I know that one too, but I can't think of how that's different from the other one. <laughs> now I'm trying to think what's what. All right, the number two song from Terry Jacks. Oh. Seasons in the Sun. Oh, such a sad song. <laughs> Didn't I just bring that up when you were talking fun. about something? We had seasons <laughs> yeah. in the sun, but the mm -hmm. time we're just That was a big, big time. song, and it's very sad. Right? The guy is <laughs> the guy is dying, and he's thinking about various things. Uh, I have the forty-five. You bought that. Flip it over. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Here's a song called "Put the Bone In." <laughs> <laughs> Not to be confused with our dick right. our dick's routine. It's put the bone in. <laughs> she asked him at the store. <laughs> Cause my doggie's been hit by a car. Oh no, one of those. And I do wanna bring him home <laughs> something. <laughs> put the bone in. She asked him <laughs> once more. Was this supposed to be double entendre I like another know. song that's coming up soon? I don't know. but It sounds like it should be, right? <laughs> but the bone is <laughs> so <laughs> awful. Even the way he sang it was awful. Mm. I sang it well compared to him. But Terry Jacks, Canadian superstar. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Number one, The Way We Were. Oh. From Barbara Streisand. Scattered pictures. We were... <laughs> Singing that on the last episode, last right? taping for some reason. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's a big uh, song from uh, the way we were. All right. What do you got for honorable mentions? Eric? Okay, I got quite a few. One is an explanation at the end here, though. Okay. Sundown. Sundown, you better take care. Gordon Lightfoot. I only mentioned that because you said you saw a special. He looked like he was on death's door. <laughs> he was. He had got to check this YouTube video out of him within the last year or so. I don't know if it was like Canada Day, but of course, COVID, you couldn't do anything. So he's standing outside. He looks like he weighs five okay. pounds, and he can't. He's singing like. It's awful. It's awful. Somebody I saw was doing something during uh, COVID. It was the guy that say Major Tom, which I believe is That's coming David up on Bowie, our, wasn't it? Uh, this was that other Major Tom song. There's two Major Tom songs. Yeah, but he was singing it pretty good. It was from 2020, and he great range on. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll t I talk about. I should have meant waited for that till '84. Band on the Run. Oh, that would be Paul McCartney and Wings. Mm-hmm. Hooked on a Feeling. B.J. Thomas? Blue Suede. This was the remake Ooh. where it goes, oh. Ooga Chaka, Ooga. Oh. Another one from Guardians of the Galaxy. They appear to be stuck in 74. Billy, Don't Be a Hero. Billy, Another Don't one Be of, a Hero. There's a lot of sappy songs, but they were very big. That's You're having my baby. Oh, God, who is that? That's not Paul Anka. Is it? Paul Anka. Is it Paul Anka. And it was very controversial. Because of one line in there. Do you remember what the long, no. one line was? No. You could have swept it from your life, but you didn't do it. <laughs> I'm referring to uh, an abortion okay. with that line. But, oh, it was very controversial oh. at the time. And you are 16. Oh, Ringo Starr. One of his worst solo songs. <laughs> Photograph, <laughs> It Don't Come Easy. And then he comes out with... You're 16, and mm -hmm. then he goes like Boogaloo, some mm -hmm. other crap song. Come on. <laughs> Another one, though, you, you don't think uh, you should be singing at whatever age he was there. You're 16. Yeah, right. Top of the world. Come on the top of the world, looking down on creation. I wouldn't have mentioned this from the Carpenters, except I remember in sixth grade we had to come up with some kind of project where you took music and put it towards art or something. And I think it was supposed to be an instrumental, but I picked Top of the World. <laughs> Look, and down, that's all I could come up with. Okay. I should have used Rock the Boat. Don't, let's see, Rock the Boat. He was Corporation. Rock the Boat. Smoking in the Boys Room. Oh, oh, I, oh. Which was a remake, I think, wasn't it? Um, or somebody remade it after. Um, 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 
Yeah, I mean Brownsville Station, I think original. This was Brownville Station. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I don't know about the remake. The Entertainer, which was from The Sting. Okay, don't know that one. Marvin Hamlish. Oh, a musical. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Just Night Chicago one. died. A lot of odd. Paper uh, lace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of odd songs. This was about what? The Chicago Gangsters. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Where they came up with these topics for songs. Radar Love. Uh, Golden Earring. Yeah. We got a thing that's called Radar Love. Love. Whatever the hell that was. Yeah. Oh. I Shot the Sheriff. Oh, I didn't shoot the deputy. Right. <laughs> but I didn't. Songs about shooting sheriffs, but not hey. the deputies. That's, from that's Eric. Eric Clapton. He's a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Tubular Bells. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know that. The theme from The Exorcist. Yes. Instrumental, Mike Oldfield. Clap for the Wolfman. Clap for the Wolfman. <laughs> He's going to rate your record high. <laughs> <laughs> Only in the 70s could you have great songs <laughs> like Clap for the Wolfman. The Guess Who, featuring Wolfman Jack, was actually yes. on there. Wolfman Jack. My Girl Bill. Do you remember this one? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I know the Jim Stafford. Right. My girl Bill. It's kind of humorous songs. Yeah. It's, she's my girl Bill. <laughs> right. It's not my girl Bill. This was way ahead of its time. The song is about a man named William Bill and his friend, the narrator of the song. The lyrics employ double entendre, <laughs> and leading the listener to infer that the men as the title also suggests, are themselves involved in a romantic relationship. However, in the last verse, a twist occurs. Uh -oh. The narrator speaks of a woman who has been the men's mutual love interest, but who has now rejected Bill, and, is, and he is explaining the situation, i.e., she's my, my girl, girl, comma, Bill. Bill. <laughs> But uh, people, uh, uh, no, had no. Uh, as far as I remember, didn't have any problem that this was suggesting that the two men were involved in something. It was just a, a cute little thing in a twist. <laughs> Nobody got offended or upset about it. Name the other song by Jim Stafford. Spiders and snakes. You got it. I don't like spiders and snakes. And then that was it, right? Yeah, pretty much. I don't even know. Is he still alive? I don't know. Uh, don't I'll check it out. out in between shows. But we gotta hurry up. We gotta do TV. We only got TV. four minutes. Okay. Uh, number ten, top ten. Nineteen seventy-four, Hawaii Five-O, the original with Jack Lord. Kind of in the begin, the middle of the run there, maybe towards the beginning. Number nine, Maud. Oh no! <laughs> Anytime the painting comes up, which I don't think. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel bought. I think that was a joke as far as I read. God, I but there so. somebody did paint it and it did sell. Oof. And there it is with one more pixel added. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, the Waltons. Those were the good years and I mentioned uh, not that there's anything wrong with it but uh, the grandparents were both uh, uh, gay. Uh, and we, you didn't life. know that at I the time. Did. Number seven, good times. Number six, Rhoda. <laughs> well, I didn't watch you, Good Time. You didn't watch Good Time? I didn't watch Rhoda. I watched it early on, both series earlier on and then uh, later on. I only watched Maud for Adrian Barbeau. Mm -hmm. uh, number five, MASH. I watched like the first two or three seasons. Up then until... Uh, people started leaving, I, yeah. I left. <laughs> uh, number four, The Jeffersons. I watched a bit yeah. of that. That was on After All in the Family, a good uh, you know, follow-up to that. Uh, this show I did watch. Number three, Chico and the Man. Yeah, I had to look that up because Chico, uh, Chico yeah, he left us early. Freddie Prinze uh -huh. at 22. Mm -hmm. Shot himself. Uh, number two, Sanford and then they brought in a little Chico, right. a little kid. This is where they go. They did that with all in the family, too. Right? Yeah. Dan Danielle Louise <laughs> Yeah. Number two is Sanford and Son. I did like that. Remember watching that on Fridays, coming home from a tough uh, sixth grade at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and your favorite show, Ed, number one, All in the Family. All in the Family, a great uh, time here. Yeah. All right, so 74, that is a good year, 74. Boy, there's a lot of great uh, things. I got to watch Earthquake. I got to get that out again. It's <laughs> hearing this. So uh, next time we'll be back, we'll be taking a look at another year in the past that we enjoyed if it's the 70s and 80s. <laughs> we'll see you then.
new media zone has been a cable 2000 production